Welcome you absolute legends, I am Bumfrey's I am Pete, I am back and I've done a little bit of a part of a series where I've talked about my favourites from my house and today is the turn of one of the most iconic fragrance houses in the world, it is Dior or Christian Dior, whichever you prefer, um, I have 15 here and I have roughly about 50 different fragrances from this house so to whittle it down to 15 is no easy feat because most of them I love a lot. But these are my favourites. There are a few that are discontinued and I'll go through them as and when they are coming up. But as always, I'm gonna crack on into the list. 15 to go through, let's go. Right, and these are all in terms of my preference. So again, take this with a grain of salt because if something's in here, you think, oh, should be higher or something be lower. Fair enough, but I'm just saying it on personal preference. We start off with, quite frankly, one of the most iconic fragrances came out in 1988, and I think you all know what this is. This is Dior Fahrenheit. Now this one is a little bit of a beast, but it's a classic fragrance. It has a lot going on here, and it performs like a monster. So it's got a violet, a bit of cedar in here, leather in here. Carnation, which is obviously massively used at the time, which, you know, but it's not so much used now, which is fine. Touch of vetiver and a bit of patchouli. Obviously it smells like a bit like gasoline, but a freshened up version. It is amazing. The reason it's at number 15 is that it's limited on its versatility. Um, I have to say where it late fall, start of winter, and I have to be in the mood for it. If I'm not in the mood for it, it ain't coming on. That's all I'm gonna say with this one. It's a great fragrance. I do think it's iconic, and I do think, it, I'd, I'd be surprised if it ever gets discontinued because it still sells like hotcakes now, which is surprising after what, nearly what, 35 years? It's an amazing fragrance, and my number 15 is Dior Fahrenheit. Okay, next one up, and this came out in 2001. Now, it has, bottles have been changed. So this is the original bottle that it came in. So you might see it a little bit different. So this is called Dior Higher. Now, most people haven't heard of this fragrance. But it's an amazing, fresh fragrance, but it's got a nice hit of pear in here. It's got a little bit of citrus, a bit of basil in here and a touch of musk in here. It's a criminally underrated fragrance. It does perform pretty well. I get seven plus hours of my skin. So again, in terms of fresh fragrances, that's pretty damn good. Um, the only other thing I saw is, it is a little bit tricky occasionally to find the old school version. I do think these are better versions than the original new versions. The new versions are in slightly different bottles. Um, they're a bit more like uh, this, but you know, Take that with a grain of salt, but this one is an amazing fragrance, perfect for the spring, summertime, very unique, and like I say, lasts a long time. If you can find a bottle like this sort of style, where it's almost like metal on the outside, find it, pick it up, and cherish it, because it's an amazing one. So my number 14 is Dior Higher. Okay, coming in at number 13, and this is one of the first discontinued ones. So I will pull when they've been discontinued. This came out in 2007, and it's part from the Eau Sauvage line, and this one is called Sauvageur Cure. This is a beautiful leather fragrance, very soft, not like real animalic in your face type leather. Oh, but I have to again, because it's discontinued, I don't wear it as much. And so this is why I will hold back myself to not spray this. I mean, obviously I've just sprayed it now, but that's fine. So it's got some beautiful mouthy lemon off the top, which gives it a beautiful freshness, but it's also got some uh, like Virginia cedar, some leather in here, which gives it a nice supple. It's not hard to wear. It's very subtle. It's very, very nice. And again, it's got some amber in here. Again, I couldn't find one with a cap. Um, that's the only downside to this one, but it's a beautiful, beautiful scent. Max Forte got me onto this one, and so thank you, Max, because this one is an absolute beaut. My number 13, this is Osabar's Fresher Cure. Right, coming in number 12, and this one came out not that long ago. Um, I think it was about 2016, 2017. This is from the House of Dior Homme Cologne. Now, I do have a massive issue with this. It smells awesome. The performance is trash. Absolute trash. It lasts maybe two, possibly three hours on my skin, but my God, that is just like the most sparkly, lemony opening you'll find anywhere. 
that's why I've put it in my top 15, but because it was a bad performance, kind of got it put it down a bit. But bergamot and some grapefruit really punched off the skin straight away. Some white uh, musks and this just, if they've got some like ambroxin or right, so we're in it. This would be amazing. This would last, I don't know, about six, seven hours. I would be happy with that. Dior, put some ice away or unboxing in this. This would be a phenomenal spring and summer scent. But because they haven't, I've kind of knocked it down a bit. So, but again, smells classy, smells amazing. And Dior do amazing classy phrases. So this for me, it's a great one, but it's trash in the performance. So this Dior Homme Cologne. Right, next one is a bit of a controversial one because some places it's discontinued, some places it is not. So I don't really know what's going on with this one, but it is an absolute powerhouse. And this from the house of Dior Arm, this is Parfum, this came out in 2014. And again, the reason it's a bit further higher up, it's not the most versatile fragrance, I'll be honest with you. It has to be a very cold day, I have to be in the mood for it. Um, so. That's the reason why, but it smells intoxicating. For some leather, oud, some iris in here, which smells amazing. Uh, some sandalwood and Italian but, uh, orange. It just has everything I want, but it has to be a cold day. Otherwise, it just, like if I have it on a warm day, it's just gonna knock people out. And that's the issue I have with this. So it's only limited to one season. I've kind of looked at everything for versatility, all that stuff, but in terms of smell, my God, it's hard to beat this one. It really is. So if you want to like, have a nice elevated performance, try Dior Homme Parfum. Right, I think we're into top 10 time now. And this is also discontinued as far as I'm aware. Um, this came out in 2018, so it's not been out a lot long, but it's from the exclusive line. And some of the exclusive lines are just outrageous. Um, but they are getting harder to find some of them. This is called Leather Oud. I've got a 125ml bottle of this. Um, oh, I'll tell you now, it is a stupidly sexy oud. Now, some people will not be interested in this. I completely understand, but I do like a good oud, very good. But it's also got oud, leather, some smoked birch, which gives it a nice smoky facet. It's, um, if you have a really smoky birch of a Ventus, You'll know what I mean. That's kind of where it goes with that. And some patchouli and a little bit of bergamot. This is stunning. Again, the problem with this is it's limited to winter time only. It is a powerhouse again. So again, I've had to knock it down because of the fact it's not the most versatile. But in terms of smell, these, these two are absolutely phenomenal. And whoever's got bottles of these, cherish them because uh, if, if now I know they're gone, they're not going to come back very quickly. So if you can find it for a decent price, it could be only up to about 200 quid because these exclusives do not come cheap. But I'm very happy to have this one. So this is number 10, Leather Oud. Right, next one up. And again, I think this is discontinued. So just, oh no, that's not this one. This one is actually still about, the next one's not discontinued. This is what completely got ruined um, but now it's absolutely beloved, so it's quite an unusual. This is Dior Homme 2020, so this has not been discontinued, I'll be honest. Ah, oh, this is nice. It's got pink pepper, a bit of patchouli in it. Vesper, bergamot, it smells very classy, very woodsy, mass appealing. It works anytime, any place anywhere. Um, the reason it's not higher up is because I prefer the others in terms of smell, but again, for, for what you get from this, it's fantastic. It's a real great, fresh, masculine, woody scent. That's all I'm gonna say. Can't go wrong with this one. I don't care how old or how young you are, this is almost like blind buy, safe worthy. So don't think, oh, I'm not sure. Just try it. Honestly, you, you'll be surprised how nice this is. So this is Dior Homme 2020, my number nine. Right, number eight, and this has been discontinued. It came out in 2001, 2000, somewhere on there. And I've got a massive 200 ml bottle, so I'm very, very lucky to have this. This is called Eau Sauvage Cooling Effect, or it's a cooling tonic. This is absolutely outrageous. But 
And it's got that Osavage DNA, but really, really freshened up with a lot of mint, lemon, and basil up the top, which gives it a beautiful herb loss. It's mass appealing. It's also got a touch of rose in here, which is not, it's like almost like the floral type, not the jammy type. And some coriander with, and a touch of amber. It's an amazing scent. If you want to wear something perfect and mass appealing and very gentlemanly, this is almost impossible to be, but again, this is hard, it's getting harder to find. So if you find a bottle of this, cherish it, grab it, do whatever you need to do to get it because it's an amazing scent. And like I say, I'm very, very lucky to have a 200 ml bottle of this and I will not be going through it very quickly, I'll be honest with you. Like I say, great little number, perfect for spring, summer. So this is my number eight, this is Eau Sauvage uh, Cooling Effect. Right, next one, and I'm not sure if this has been discontinued or not, so, I'm not 100% sure of this one, but it's from the exclusives of the line again. And this for me is an amazing one. This is Oud Rosewood. Again, I like an Oud fragrance. So again, if you don't, that's cool. Oh, it's just got one of the sexiest fragrances ever. For It's got Brazilian Rosewood, which is just, oh, it's to die for. Oud, a touch of citrus, a little bit of petty ground, which gives it a little bit of freshness. So it's not too much. Otherwise, it'll just it overpass. The only problem again with this is it only can wear it in the winter. It's all a very cool uh, fall day. It's probably a bit more versatile than the others, but for me, it's just stupidly sexy. And I'm so happy to have a massive 250 ml. I still got 125 ml left, so I've gone through half a bottle, which means if I've used that much, I like it a lot. An amazing scent. If you've got a bottle of this, look after it because I don't know how, if it's been discontinued or not. Amazing scent, this is Ro Oud Rosewood. Right, just missing out on the top five space at number six, and this came out in 1991, and they were ahead of the time on this one. It's an absolute stunner. This is called Dior Dune, and this is still available, and it's not too expensive. This is one of the more the cheaper versions, cheaper ones on, in Dior. I think you get one of like 100 mil for about 60 quid. Oh, that is just heavenly. But it's got, again, Brazilian rosewood. I kind of got to say, it's an amazing scent. Fig, a touch of rose in here again. But this is more, again, the fresher rose type thing. For vanilla and a bit of benzoin, it's to absolutely last ages. Slightly green, and right now, that's kind of in. This would fit in perfectly with what's going on in the fragrance world right now. Not even bat an eyelid, and everyone's just like, oh, that's, that's nice. So if you're all into like the slightly greener fragrances and stuff like that, try your June. Yeah, I promise you, it's something that is going to be blow your socks off. It's an amazing scent, and this is why it's at number six. This is that Dior June. Right, top five time now, and these are amazing. They're versatile, and I love them all. So we start off with number five, and I'm going to get some serious heat for this one, but I'll explain why. This is Dior Eau Sauvage Parfum 2017. I have the 2012 version as well. The reason I've put this in instead of the 2012 version is A, the 2012 version has been discontinued. B, it's more accessible. And C, this is more versatile. It is a lot freshened up version than the original. The original is a bit darker than this. But it's got citron, bergamot. It's got a touch of Vesper in here, very gentlemanly. A little bit of LME in here. And I will say this. If you're over 25, you will love this. It's just very classy, very gentlemanly, amazing fragrance. I do not know anyone who will wear this and go, oh, well, that's, that's, that smells bad. It smells fantastic. And really and truthfully, hopefully this one doesn't get discontinued. If they do, then I'll buy a backup of this because I do think this is better. The original 2012 version, I do think it's great but it is again, probably more for your 30s and upwards. This is a bit more accessible for everyone else. So this is Dior Sauvage Eau Sauvage Parfum, at number five. Right, coming at number four, and I haven't spoken about the other Sauvage line, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I am bored of it, but I can't deny the fact it is one of the biggest selling lines ever, like period in the history of fragrances. But this is my favorite version of this, um, and it's not the EDT, because the EDT gives me a headache. But this one is the Parfum version, and I find it much smoother 
lot better. Performance is monstrous. I mean, the compliment factor is unbelievable. Came out in 2019. It's one, I think it was the first Sauvage I bought. And then I've got the EDP, I've got the cooling spray, I've got um, the Elixir one. But this one with me, pink pepper, that Tonka, vanillic notes at the base, mandarin orange and olibanum, which means this is an absolute nuclear warhead. I will put this on and I guarantee you someone will say what you're wearing. I've never not put this on and not someone will say what you're wearing. Because I think everyone knows what the ET is, but the performance is just so much smoother, nicer, richer. It just works. And again, if you're wearing it in summer, maybe one, two sprays. In the winter, I put three to four. So just be mindful of how much you put on. But this is phenomenal, and I will recommend this one to the day I die. So this is Dior Sauvage Parfum. Right, top three time now, and two out of the three are discontinued. So I'm sorry. If you have any of the, either of these two, you've got some absolute juggernauts. This one came out in 2011, and this is Fahrenheit Aqua. Oh my God, what did they do to this? Then they brought out Aqua, uh, no, um, Fahrenheit Cologne, which I've got both of these. This is just hands and feet above everything. It takes that original DNA and just freshens it beautifully up with a lot of grapefruit here. Still got that violet in here, mint, that leather, touch of vetiver in here. It smells like a million bucks. But again, I've got 125 ml. Yeah, 125 ml bottle. I'm not going to go through it that quickly. I've done it on purpose, so I think I've had it twice. Um, but both times I've got compliments from it. So I am just gutted that both that and the cologne's gone. I mean, the cologne wasn't that great, but this is just something else. Amazing scent. Well worth having a bottle of this. If you can find it for about 100 quid or less, even between 100 and 120, I'd still pay for it for that, for this size bottle. Try and find this one. It's an amazing one. This is Aqua Fahrenheit. Right, number two. And the original one came out in 1980, but this is the re-released version that came out in 2016. And this is still available right now. So this is a criminally underrated one called Jules. And the original one's a bit more beefed up apparently, but I don't know. I have never tried the original. But this one, oh mama. It's got lots of herbal notes in it, some black pepper, which is very spicy, very sexy. This could be worn three out of four seasons. It could be spring, fall, and winter, to be honest with you. Some uh, fur, some leather, a touch of cedar in here. It is stupidly classy. I mean, like to the point where I will put this on quite happy. Couldn't get that on then. Um, it's just, you dress this up and you, you, someone will say, are you wearing niche fragrances? That's how good this one is. It's so, so, so flipping good. Um, like I say, it's perfect for now. I mean, I'd say hot summer, maybe dial it back a bit, but one of the most versatile ones I've found from Dior. It smells incredible. I think this one's about 80 quid. It's an absolute steal at that point, and this one is an amazing one. So this is number number two. This is Dior Jules. Right, which leads me to number one, and this should be no surprise to anyone. It's discontinued. Uh, luckily, I have two bottles of this. Um, my first one I've hammered the heck out of. It's just the most edible, delectable, sexy thing in a bottle ever. Um, this is Fief de Lius, and oh my good God almighty. This just, oh. I could smell that all day. It's got caramel, cacao powder, um, which gives it that chocolatiness. Leather, a bit of jasmine in here, some benzoin, it's just got praline in here. It's just delectable. And it's gutting that it's gone because this is just an absolute juggernaut of a sexy fragrance. I could wear this anytime I want. That's, that's the great part. And as you can see, with a 250 ml ball, I've hammered the heck out of it. I've got another full 250 ml ball. I'm not gonna go through that as fast because I know it's discontinued. So I'm very much aware of that. So I pulled myself back a bit to stop spending, uh, using it as much. A great fragrance. And if it's super sexy garment, 
I don't know much that can beat this one in any person's in any house. So this is my number one for Matt by a landslide. This is Fave Delius. Right, so there are my 15 favourites from Dior. There are so many more. It, I mean, like I say, they could put in um, uh, Dior Era from the private line. There's the Vetiver. There's all sorts of, like you, you can go for. But it's now time to tell you what I'm wearing in scent of the day. Right, my scent of the day, and this is cheapy, but it smells very, very classy. I'm feeling a bit classy at the moment. Don't know why. Don't ask me. This is from the house of my mere corner. This is Vibrant Vetiver Delight. This is just delectable. It's very fresh. Uh, very, lots of, little bit of vetiver. Smells amazing, touch sweetness in here. It's an absolute gem. It runs about 30 to 40 quid, depending on where you go. It's an amazing one. So as always, let me know in the comments what you've loved wearing. Because I've found some new phrases because of you guys saying what you're wearing. So please keep to let me know. But this is mine, this is Amir Corner, Vibrant Vetiver Delight. Right, so there you have it, my favourite 15 from Dior. Um, as always, let me know in the comments what have I missed. Is there any other ones from Dior that you should have been in here and some should have been taken out? Love hearing from you guys. If you've got a top 10 list, a phrase review or a question, hit me up in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Join the bunch of absolute legends that you are. And uh, find me also on TikTok and Instagram, I'm there for my phrases. And as always, you absolute legends smell amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.